Peace, what's going down? It's DJ Payne, one for BeatStars.com, here with a special guest. This is his first, uh, I believe, interview, period. One of the top-selling producers on BeatStars, Taylor King, what's going down? What's going on, man? How you doing? Hey, man, I'm, I'm good. I appreciate you sitting down and um, and christening your, your <laughs> production career with this interview. Pretty excited, man. I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, yeah, so let me, let me get into me these... These hardcore personal questions. <laughs> All right, so the wackest producer on the internet right now. Go, not playing. How long? How long have you been making beats, man? Uh, you're, you're young. I was surprised to find out how, how young you were. How, how long have you been doing this? I'm 23. I've probably been making beats since I was around like 16, 17. So I got started like while I was in high school. You play guitar as well. Have you been playing yeah. guitar just as long or longer? I've kind of been playing guitar since like elementary school. Like I got lessons for a little bit. And then from there on, I was just like self-taught. Same with piano, pretty much. So as far as production goes, then, in, in that career span of under a decade, have you ever had a, a major placement on a, on a big label project? Um, No. How long have you been making a living off of selling beats without ever having had a major placement? Uh, it's been about four years now since I've been doing it, like, officially. Uh, so, yeah. Like, I have some stuff in the works, but nothing has officially ever ever come through yet as far as, like, a major placement. This is what's so dope to me about this new production marketplace model that's come, I guess, you know, in terms of the history of the music business pretty pretty recently with online sales. And I tweeted about this recently. It was that I tweeted um, a lot of producers who sell beats online, specifically producers who sell tight beats because there's all this controversy surrounding right. it. You know the tight beats model. A lot of producers who are selling tight beats are making good livings. A lot of them are even making six-figure incomes, in spite of all the criticism they receive. Because uh, a lot of people will say, "Well, if you're making tight beats, you're not getting major placements." I'd argue that's not true. But you're you're in an interesting position because you're making a living off of right. making tight beats with yeah. no major placements yet. I, I know you got some in the works. I'm not going to press you unless you want to talk about them. Then I'll get an exclusive. But obviously, I got a, a ton of criticism saying, no, no way. Produ type B producers aren't making anything. Right. W one of one of the Beat Stars, a fellow Beat Stars user, 30 Hertz Beats, tweeted, and I'll just read it off the sheet. He tweeted, I've been making beats since 2008, and I was frustrated because I didn't get any placements. Since last year, I uploaded type beats, and it changed everything for me. I'm now at ten thousand dollars a month it's insane you can definitely do it without being in the industry at all i've read before about other people that have only been in the industry and you know tripled or quadrupled what they made just from putting beats online and doing tight beats y you can literally make a living off of beats without being in the industry at all whatsoever yeah i, I spoke with um with Curtis King, he said that I think the first month he started selling beats online, that he made more money than he had made in his entire career chasing major label placements. Right. Um, yeah. and you, you don't have to tell me how much you're making, but based on your experiences and the experiences of your peers, would you say that selling beats on the internet provides a pretty good income for you? Definitely. Four years ago, uh, I was probably making like the first year that I officially would have called this my job. I was making, you know, one to two thousand dollars a month. And like for me then, I felt like on top of the world, like this year, my biggest month was was over twenty thousand dollars. So it's just doubled and doubled like every year, it seems um, to the point where it's like I'm going to do this as long as I can. And I, I feel like the major placements will start to come as well. They'll just start to follow. And you have gotten recently some some offers from some major label artists, correct? I've been working with um, Paris, which is a new artist that just that just signed a 300. I recently got another uh, um, opportunity with a boogie. He made a song to one of my beats. There's a lot of things that that are starting to happen, and I'm starting to see kind of like the industry side of it and the placement side of it pick up now. Like that, that's pretty much my next big goal is to you know become a gold producer, a platinum producer, and you know kind of kind of make great records with with big artists and stuff like that. And these are artists who are finding your beats online, either on your beat stars or your YouTube, right? Yep, everything. Everyone finds me on YouTube. Like I'll send out beats to A and R's and to labels and stuff, and and then later on, it seems like they'll come back to me for those same beats um, because they because an artist found it on YouTube. That's interesting. I'm not gonna touch that. One. <laughs> <laughs> we could talk about that all day. Back to the Twitter BS. Um, after I tweeted about tight beat producers making good incomes, the one producer claimed that that no tight beat producers ever worked with top talents or, or received any awards, which is crazy to me. Uh, and I brought up Panda, which was actually 
originally listed right. as a Meek Mill type beat, um, and that went several times platinum. It was nominated for a Grammy. And it turned into one of the biggest songs. <laughs> one one of, of the, the biggest, year, you know? pro- honestly, probably the last five years. It, it was. It, I don't yeah. know how many times platinum it, it actually went, but it's certified again and again. If you put a beat online, anything can happen with it. Anybody can find it. You never know. That's why I the way I live now, because people are always like, "Oh, you should you should save your best beats. You shouldn't upload your best beats." I'm like, I upload everything because that's the way that they're gonna get placed. If if they have that chance, that's how it's gonna happen. Someone's gonna find it on YouTube if it's good enough. Someone will find it. Someone will hear it. So, so given that so many producers who who make type beats or just any kind of beat that they upload to the internet, available to the general public, um, are supporting themselves, but also going platinum, winning awards, whether they're ASCAP or BMI awards, whether they're right. Grammy nominations, why why do you think there's still such a stigma on internet producers, <clears throat> even from other producers in the industry? Why why do you think there's so much criticism? I just think people always want something to complain about and something to hate on. And a lot of people are just mad and upset that they didn't get in on it um, when they should have. And so so they just put us down and try to put us in a category of we're not on the same level. We're not, you know, the way that we do things is, is cheesy or, or whatever people want to say. In reality, I think that we're winning more than anyone. It's great to work from home and make a living off what you love doing like if you're doing that it doesn't it doesn't matter what anybody else says anyway <laughs> so speaking of working from home where is home for you um i live in a small town in new jersey called delanco so i'm about i'm about half an hour away from philly and an hour south of uh, newark new jersey so let me ask why, why not relocate to la or atlanta i remember when i got my first placement everyone was saying move to new york move to la right that yeah a lot of people will tell me that too and, and it's just like we don't need to we can work we can live anywhere and do what we do that's kind of the beauty in it like maybe eventually one day i'll relocate or something but i, I don't need to do anything i'm comfortable you know so we we can do our jobs from anywhere in the world that's the beauty in it all a lot of a lot of people now, producers, are sending me tweets, sending me messages, saying, "Hey, man, I, I heard the the online beat selling thing is dead," oh, no. and, and they heard it from you know someone else <laughs> That's who crazy. heard it from someone else. And and earlier, what you were saying is that you only started four years ago. It's not as though you you know you got in, the you know around the Johnny Giuliano era. Right? Or, yeah. I like when I got in, I was still looked at it as like um, it was just a hobby for me. I never thought it would turn into my job um and i'm and i started because i liked listening to other producers type beats so i wanted to do something similar now like i feel like now it's just getting started like it's just starting to blow up um on a way larger scale um like my goal when i started was to have a video on youtube with fifty thousand views and now i have a video with almost five million i think or over five million so if anything it's it's just growing and growing and getting bigger so like we're just getting started like it's nothing still so all the producers who haven't really gone all in and they're feeling discouraged because they're seeing you know the taylor kings and the cash money ap's they shouldn't be discouraged no not at all i like um i i see people all the time with two three four thousand subscribers and and they're at a hundred thousand in a year so it's like if you're making good content and you're putting good content out and being consistent um you can blow up fast like people people will notice you people will like your music they'll subscribe like anybody can blow up in a year it's, you, you, that shouldn't stop you at all another kind of intimidation factor for a lot of producers is the emphasis on advertising dollars um with regard to beat sales and we kind of had an informal conversation a while ago and i, w- I was surprised to learn this f- um about you. you you told me that you haven't really spent much money on advertising correct yeah like i've experimented a little bit um like i i've done advertising on beat stars i've done a little bit on youtube i don't really like the results on youtube um this for the past three or four months i haven't i'm do i'm experimenting right now i haven't done any i haven't spent really anything on advertising i've tested the waters and just about everything like even on sound cl- click like a couple years ago but i really i really believe in just like kind of putting more effort into the content um and 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 i believe that if the content's good like people will find it people will buy it um and kind of uh, just taking an organic uh, approach now and kind of letting the music do the work so would you say one of your main sources of sales is youtube oh hands down youtube is my number one source of traffic so how over the last 
I guess only four years did you build up such a, a loyal subscriber base that eventually morphed into a, a customer base? Honestly, just being consistent, putting out a couple beats a week or at least at the least one beat a week and doing that for four years, you know, um, I think that I have enough of an original sound where people keep coming back to me. People keep watching me like not every beat is amazing. Not every beat is going to be everyone's favorite, but I have that consistent original sound that people seem to um, gravitate back to. So the, honestly, it just keeps coming back to the content for me. You may have already answered this question, but but what is one action, if you had to pick, that you took that you can definitively say helped increase your beat sales? I would say polishing up my uh, my overall sound and trying to stop trying to compete with people that I don't compete with. Just, you know, focus on which beats kind of do the best numbers and which pe- which type of beats people like the most. And then I would just I would just do what I do in that area. Like I if I don't really make really good like trippy red type beats, I'm not going to I'm not even going to try to compete with that. I'm just going to I'm just going to stick to what I'm good at. Drake type beats, Post Malone type beats kind of stay in the style that I'm doing and and give the people what they like in the first place. Don't try to don't try to do too much because I know everyone's like, oh, you should be doing you should be doing every type beat you should be doing to hit all the target audiences. But I kind of just try to focus on the ones that people react to, you know. Dream Life says that that same thing, uh, and he's obviously quite good at at the boom bap and classic right. hip hop beats. Uh, and he says that that's what works, and he encourages other producers to, to do the same. So now that this is two top sellers that I'm hearing that from. So whoever right. whoever's watching this, you know, <laughs> maybe this is an important uh, bit yeah. of advice. You're making a good income off selling beats online. The the first time a major label approached you to buy a beat, you weren't really happy with the terms, right? No, not at all. So I know one of the the things you didn't like about the major label producer agreements was the whole work for hire element, right? Correct. So, and just, you know, for people watching who don't know that work for hire is a a legal term that basically means any producer selling a beat under work for hire is also selling the copyright to that beat. Another way to say that is when you sell a beat that's work for hire, you're, you're selling your masters. And of course, work for hire contracts often pay five figures. So it's kind of a a, a trade-off. Maybe it's, maybe it's more than five figures. Uh, but there are, are a lot of producers making good money leasing beats on the internet and you don't sign a work for hire contract when when you sell no. a beat. No. Yeah, like a lot of it is just the language that they use and that's something that I didn't know getting into it. I I used the entertainment lawyer for the first time, the which you recommended me. Thank you for no, helping Yeah, no me problem. Out. Man. That's what I just tell everybody now. I'm like if you're going to do any kind of major um deal, just get an entertainment lawyer. It's worth it. I was lucky enough to have them explain things to me and, and teach me um instead of just you know do their job they they explain things to me on the phone and what certain things meant so that now i know going into deals in the future i know things to talk about beforehand because you can have a conversation on the phone with someone from a label and everything can be everything can be good and then the piece of paper that they give you can mean something completely different so <laughs> get a lawyer <laughs> Definitely been in that position. So because there are so many producers now making good money leasing beats on the internet and they're not dealing with selling their masters or their copyrights, do you think labels will eventually start changing their practices so far as copyright and master ownership goes just because of now the internet being such a dominant... It's kind of it's kind of where everyone's getting beats from now. I think they're going to have to eventually change um, the way they do things because... They're they're gonna have to because it's just everything is starting to work differently. Um, because labels are buying tight beats on the internet that are on YouTube. They're, you know, you have to bring in, you have to bring different things into the conversation. You have to say, okay, um, are you gonna make me remove my beat from YouTube? Um, are you gonna whitelist it? Can I still make monetization revenue off the um, off the YouTube video? Um, there's there's different things that you have to talk about. Um, and I think, I think that the labels are going to kind of start to change the way they do things because the way they're buying the beats is, is completely different. They're buying, they're buying, labels are buying exclusives to beats that hundreds of people have leased already. So how does that work? You know what I mean? There's, there's so much gray area. <laughs> right. Right. 
Right. Exactly. Exactly. So it's giving it's giving us type beat producers a lot more leverage in negotiation now. Um, I'm not going to say who or what beat, but I um, one of the labels that I'm dealing with, I told them um, that I wanted 10,000 for a beat. And they said, whoa, you know, like we're not even like we're paying that for like some young thug beat beats and stuff, you know. So these are huge artists that they're paying those prices for. And I said, well, I base my pricing off of what I've made off of leases already and what I can make off of leases in the future. So we have a lot more leverage in negotiation now and and don't sell yourself short and fall under pressure. You know, like know, know your worth and know the worth of the beat that you're selling. What's what's new for Taylor King in, in 2018? Um, honestly, uh, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to focus and kind of recreate my sound. Um, a big thing for me right now is to, is to make producing less of a job and less of a, a, a formula that I'm following and, and kind of make it fun again. Um, and, and make it exciting again and do new things with sounds and, and kind of like, I just, I just want to focus on making good music that I like and, and 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 making it the best that it can be for everyone that wants to buy it so yeah so in, so in addition to the to you uploading more beats and and, and we might hear a, a an evolution of your sound does that mean that there's going to be a taylor king album <laughs> i would i would love to do something like that um i'm working you know with a bunch of like close friends and and people who are making music um i'm helping i'm where i'm working i'm experimenting in different genres i'm helping my friend that makes, you know, rock, um, and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm kind of expanding, um, my genre a little bit and, and working with other people, um, and kind of, kind of just going back to the, the basics and, um, ma making everything exciting again, making music exciting again for me. Um, cause I was getting bored. I was getting bored a lot. And, uh, and it just kind of felt redundant. Like I was doing the same thing over and over again, making a beat, uploading it on YouTube. So I'm just going to take a couple steps back um, and, and kind of do what I want to do, focus on the content even more um, and just, you know, just try to make, try to make great work. Well, good, man. Much, much continued success to you. Uh, where can people find you? Um, Taylor King um, YouTube, just search Taylor King. Um, other than that, I think you can search me on beat stars too at Taylor King. So, um, at Taylor King on Twitter, Taylor is King on IG, so, and that's pretty much it. Cool, man. Well, I appreciate you sharing your time and your expertise and your experiences with the community. Uh, For we're sure, we're gonna have to get on a on another one of these interviews once the once the placements come in, and you can share your experiences <laughs> yeah. with, with all that. Definitely, man. I appreciate it.